are here. Let's see who's going to join us today. Hi. Hi, everyone. Actually, I'm going to take out my... I think I could hear better. You can hear me better. Hello. Welcome to my live. Now, I don't know, I never usually go live at this hour. I was hoping I can get on in the morning. I was not able to. Um, so I don't know, it's probably super hectic. I don't know who's gonna join, but for those of you who can be with us, I am so grateful and really excited to have you here with me and everybody else. I hope you're able to catch up later, whoever's watching this later. Thank you for being here at any time, at any hour. Hey, Javi, welcome back. Okay, do I know how long the class will be? Not too long because I have to leave soon and also I'm going to try to keep them short. Yesterday was longer because we did a whole intro to Midos. Today we don't have to do that intro. Today we're just going to jump right in to this week's emotional attribute. And we're going to start right now. So um, whoever is here, thank you so much for joining and we shall begin. The, the, the element of this week, the, the attribute, the spiritual characteristic of this week is what we call Tiferet. So I mentioned quickly and briefly yesterday that Tiferet is actually the, hi Esther, hi everyone. Um, oh, it's the perfect timing for the Swiss time zone. I wish I could have said I knew that, but I didn't. So welcome from Switzerland. Um, I know it's not, it's not the best time, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, I wasn't able to come on earlier and I gave you my word that I'm coming on today, so. Here I am, and you know, just everyone else can just catch up whenever. Okay, so I mentioned very briefly yesterday that Tiferet is the the culmination of Chesed and Gevura. What it is is it's a it's a blend, it's a harmony between the love of Chesed and the discipline of Gevura, and Tiferet has a power that comes through the dimension of the synchronization of those two attributes of chesed and gvura, and that is what we call truth. It's what we call balance. It's what we call compassion. And by the way, each one of these midos that we're talking about and the spheros that we're talking about, the attributes, whatever word you want to use, the elements that we're talking about is, yes, Esther, um, that we're talking about, they all, they have multiple meanings because it's not one dimensional. Everything really comes together with each other. So sometimes in Tiferet, we're going to focus on the aspect of truth. Sometimes we're going to focus on the aspect of balance. Sometimes we're going to focus on the aspect of compassion. And today, for the most part, we will be focusing on compassion. So that's how we're going to define Tiferet because truth is what comes from this combination of chesed and gevura, right? A healthy balance between the two because truth is accessed through selflessness, through rising above your own ego and, and your own predispositions and enables you to recognize what the truth actually is because it's not about me, it's something bigger than me, right? So truth gives you like this clarity and this, this objective picture of your needs and of other people's needs. It allows you to step out of yourself to be there for another person, to understand another person, to connect with another person, and to see who they are and what they need from me. So this quality actually gives Tiferet its name, which really, really is beauty. So we have Tiferet meaning beauty. We have it as understanding what truth is, as a balance between Chesed and Gevura. And it is accessed by getting out of your own self, by getting out of your own ego, and allowing you to be in touch with your own needs and other people's needs as well, and thereby creating a level of compassion. So that's how we're going to be understanding Tiferet today as compassion. So let's talk about today, and then we're gonna go through all the other days of this week, but as a session. So today is Chesed in Tiferet, and this is loving kindness in compassion. So the question we need to ask ourselves is today, 
okay? And I know it's already the afternoon for most of us, it's the evening for some of you, it doesn't matter. This can still be a question that we can sit right now and ask ourselves. Am I sure that the kindness that I am offering is truly what the other person needs? Not all chesed is created equal. Because sometimes we can be doing a chesed for another person, but it actually could not be what they need from us at all. And we might just be doing it to fulfill our own emotional need to give, which is legitimate. We all have a need to give. We all have a need to be kind and to, um, to do chesed. But sometimes the chesed is coming from a place of trying to fulfill that need. And that's what we need to ask ourselves. The, the beauty of chesed, the compassion of chesed is to truly understand what does the person need from me? It's not about me, right? I'm taking myself out of this moment. And um, there's a story that comes to mind of a woman who reached out to me a few years ago. She was devastated. She was just so disappointed. What happened? Her daughter was going away to a seminary and she wanted to throw her a goodbye party. And she kept telling her daughter, we're gonna throw you a goodbye party, all the family, friends, everyone's gonna come. And her daughter kept saying, I don't want a goodbye party. I, I'm low key, right? I don't need something so big. I don't need everybody to come over. And the mother's like, no, what do you mean? You're leaving for a year. We want everyone, you want, we want you to see how loved you are and how much everybody's gonna miss you. Of course we're making a goodbye party. And the daughter kept saying, please don't make me a goodbye party. I really don't want one. And one day the daughter came home and sure enough, surprise, the house was full. Everybody was there and the mother made a huge goodbye party. The daughter was so upset. She ran to her room. She refused to come down. And the mother was devastated and she called me and she said, I don't understand. We just want to show her how much we love her. We're going to miss her. And she refuses to accept this goodbye party from us. She's making it so difficult for me. And I, and I said to this woman, I said, I understand how badly you want to make this party, but I want you to ask yourself, are you making this party for her or are you making this party for you? Because to me, it sounds like you're making this party for yourself. You want to prove somehow that we're gonna miss her or you want the people to come over, but this is not about her because she told you she doesn't want a party. And that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Is the chesed that I'm doing, is the kindness that I'm doing for someone what they actually need from us? Or is it just something that I'm doing to fulfill my own emotional need to give or because I want to do it? Because they're not the same. So. If we wanna understand how to have more empathy and how to be there for a person um, and how to know what they need, I'm gonna tell you a tip on how to really truly be there for another person, okay? When someone is sharing with you something that they're going through, let's say they're sharing their pain, they're sharing their struggle, they're sharing their difficulty, or you meet someone who's going through something challenging, we often fall into one of these three automatic reactions, okay? Number one, we suddenly feel very uncomfortable and we either try to avoid eye contact with them, um, making them feel even more isolated, right? We look the other way, we're gonna turn our back, we're gonna go down the other aisle in the supermarket, and that often can make them feel even more isolated. They know, they know what we're doing. Or the second automatic reaction often could be that we just get so awkward that we end up saying the wrong thing, possibly hurting them even more because we feel like we have to say something, but we don't really know what to say. And the third automatic reaction that we have sometimes in these situations is that we jump into solution mode, into fixer mode, which can be very frustrating and often very unhelpful for them. So instead of assuming what the person needs or instead of doing what we're comfortable doing for them, or instead of trying to avoid their needs, let's ask them these two questions, okay? You can write this down or you can listen back to this or you could screen record this. Ask them these two questions. Number one, what is the best way that I can help you right now? I wanna help you, I don't know how to help you. So please tell me, what is the best way that I can help you right now? How do you need me to be there for you? Now, often the person might not know exactly what they need from you. 
They might not know. They could be very overwhelmed. They could be embarrassed. There are so many reasons why they might not be able to express what they need from you. So then you continue on and you give them some options. And I'm going to give you four options that I find to be the, the ones that are usually what people need from us. When you give them these options, you allow them to have more clarity in what they actually need from someone else. All right, so we're going over to them and we're saying, what is the best way that I can help you right now? How do you need me to be there for you? Number one, do you need a listening ear? Do you wanna just talk? Do you wanna vent? Do you wanna say something? Um, and just for me to just sit there and listen, I'm here for you. Or do you need help problem solving? Maybe this is a real serious situation that you can't figure out what to do and I'll help you problem solve. Or do you just need someone to brainstorm with? Do you just need to think of ideas, think of something? I'm here to brainstorm with you. And the fourth option is maybe you just need some chizok. Do you want to tell me what's going on? Do you want to talk and I'll try to give you whatever chizok I can? Let me know. Okay, how can I be there for you? What is the best way that I could help you right now? And then you give them those options. A listening ear, problem solving, someone to brainstorm with, or some chizak. And by asking them openly, you cannot, it's not only that you're giving them the support in the way that they need you, but you also normalize their pain by not making it awkward and by showing them that you really, really care about them you just, and you really wanna help them in the best way. So it would be very, very beneficial to get curious about people, get to know people. The only way to really, really help them is to get to know them and by asking them openly, what do you need from me? How can I be there for you? Let's make sure that we are, that we have, um, that our chesed um, is one of tiferet, is one of beauty, is one of truth, is one of honesty, is well balanced. And it's about them and not about me. Okay, now let's talk about tomorrow, which is gavura in compassion. Gavura is discipline. We spoke a lot about this yesterday because it was the whole week of Gavura. So I'm sorry, a few days ago. So we have Gavura, which is discipline, limits, boundaries. That's Gavura. So what is Gavura in Tiferet? Gavura, uh, discipline in compassion. Is there a hard truth about yourself that you need to face? Think about that for a minute. Is there a hard truth about yourself that you need to face? Is it time to be honest about your lifestyle? Are you taking good care of your health or are you living as an ostrich with your head buried in the sand? Right, you just don't wanna face things that you need to face. Are you taking good care of your health? Is it time to start working on certain midos? on being more patient, more compassionate, um, less judgmental, right? What is a hard truth about yourself that you need to face? Is it time to get your house in order? Maybe things are all disorganized and you really have to start putting things in order. Um, is it time to spend less time online or with distractions and more time with your family? Maybe it's time to start working on your marriage or other relationships, relationships with your parents, with your children, right? Um, one second, let me just see this comment. Would you be able to incorporate a little something in regards to being patient and staying put and understanding instead of being afraid? Let me make sure I understand your question. Be, oh, being patient and staying put, like if you're, if you're, in the process of waiting for something to happen or trying to create something or do something and understanding instead of being afraid of doing that thing. Iron Beauty, if you can just give me um, into the sphere tomorrow. Yeah, um, if you can just clarify a little bit about what you meant, I'll be more than happy to see how I can incorporate that, okay? Um, yeah, okay. Can you please send me a DM so that I'll have it in my DMs and I'll remember what you wanted? Okay, thank you so much. All right, um, what are we talking about? Gvura in Tiferet, right? So this is all about, is there a hard truth waiting for the process of something? Yeah, I got it, okay, perfect. Just try to send me a DM so that I remember, please, all right? 
is there a hard truth about yourself that you need to face, that you've been avoiding, that you've not wanted to see? There is a real thing called the ostrich bias, which is when we bury our head in the sand, we just don't want to face the things we need to face, right? Um, Gevura in Tiferet means it's time to face those things, okay? What are the things I need to work on? What are the mitos I need to work on? What are the relationships I need to work on? Maybe it's time to face uh, my health and do something about it, take proper actions towards it. Maybe it's time to deal with a certain trauma or a challenging mita that, that I've been trying to avoid. Maybe now is the time, right? What is the hard truth in your life that you need to face? So that is Gevura in Tiferet. Now let's move on to the next day, which is Tiferet and Tiferet. Now remember yesterday I said that when there is a double, it is super, super strong, right? A double is trouble. That's something that is really powerful, really, really powerful. So what is this double over here of Tiferet? Bat Melech, it's your birthday week. Oh my goodness, happy birthday. It should be an amazing, amazing birthday for you, an amazing year for you, all of your desires, all the deepest desires and wishes and dreams and tefillos should be answered with revealed goodness. It should be an amazing, amazing year for you. Okay. You are welcome. One second, I'm just going to take a drink. Okay. Is there a deeper connection as to why Rosh Chodesh Iyar always coincides with Tiferet Week? That is such a great question. I want to get to that afterwards. Let me finish with Tiferet, and I'm going to try to remember. If I don't remember, please, please remind me. I love that question. Okay? So that is Gevura in Compassion. Now in Tiferet. Now let's move on to Tiferet and Tiferet. Oh, that's, I already said that. Double Tiferet, Tiferet. What does this mean? Okay? Is there, listen to this question, is there compassion in my compassion? Is there compassion in my compassion? What does that mean? See how sometimes you could be um, I don't know, you can be at a simcha and you could be participating in the simcha, but it doesn't mean you're really feeling the simcha. You could be going through your own things, right? Sometimes you could be experiencing something. You have to live your life. You have to move on, but it doesn't mean you're fully in it. Sometimes you could be behaving in a manner that is compassionate, but is there actually compassion in your compassion? Is there compassionate feeling in the compassionate behavior. That's really, really the question that we need to ask when it comes to Tiferet and Tiferet. Let me explain that a little bit more. Is my compassion, right, what I am doing, um, how I am treating another person, I'm calling it compassion, but is it loving? Is it warm? Is it tender? Or does it come across as pity? That can be a tough balance between compassion and pity. Is it condescending, the thing that I'm doing for another person? What I'm telling them, how I'm treating them, what I'm giving them, what I'm doing for them. Am I up here and you're down there? I want to talk about chesed for a minute. The idea of, of compassion, of kindness, of giving. The actual mitzvah of chesed is gemilut chasadim, or gemilos chasadim, right? Think of the word gemil, ge, that, that word, gemilat chasadim, right? The shorish of that word is gimel mem lamid. What other word is that? Anybody know? Gamal? Write in the, in the comments. What's gamal? I'll give you a hint. You may have written one in Israel. Anybody? Gamal? A camel! Exactly. A gamal is a camel. Right, right, right. Camel, camel, camel. 
think about it for a minute. Have you ever been on a camel? Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the camel emojis. Look at that camel over there in the comments, okay? If you want to get on top of that camel, if you have ever gone on, gone for a camel ride, if you were in Eretz Bereshit in Israel and you've gone on a camel ride, what has to happen for you to get on top of that camel? The camel has to bend all the way down. Its entire body, those humps that you see there, the entire body ends up being down the floor, his head sticking out in the front of him. And then you very easily just pick your foot up, step and get onto the camel because he's all the way down on the ground. I remember once in Eretz Bereshit, I stood underneath the camel. This was not safe, don't try it at home. I stood underneath the camel, I took a picture under the camel and I posted it, I think it was on Facebook all those years ago. And I wrote, Ashir al Hashem ki gamal alai. Right? There was a camel on top of me. Um, the, the idea of a camel getting all the way down to allow you to get on top of him is what is the same exact idea of gemilat chasadim. When we are um, doing chesed, and that's why it has the exact same shoresh, gimel mem lamed, because that's how we do chesed. We do chesed like a camel. We have to bend down. We don't do chesed from me being up here and you being down there. We're at the same level. We're equals. We're equally as yeah, with humility, but humility, we're actually gonna to get to in a few more days, we're gonna talk about humility, um, but there is a direct connection to both of these, okay? To true compassion and to humility. Absolutely, Avivit. So, um, we're, we're equal and we have to understand that we're equal, we have to look at each other as equals. Equal people on equal ground, we are equally good, we are equally wise, we are equally wonderful, we are equally worthy, we are equally deserving, right? But right now, I'm in a space where I can give to you, and that's what I'm doing. So we're gonna talk about that more when we get to humility, which we'll, we'll get to in a few minutes. But that's what compassion really means. At, um, tiferet in Tiferet. Is there compassion in my compassion? Okay, am I equal to you? Am I, am I treating you in an equal way? Am I down? Am I on your level? Right? And part of getting down is also about bringing them back up. But we'll talk about that more when we get to humility. This is kind of like an intro to the next one. But this is step one when it comes to real tiferet, real compassion and compassion. Okay? Um, not to make sure that there's nothing about this that is condescending in any way and that we're really, really, truly having compassion in our compassion. It's not just the action, but it's also the intention. Okay, now let's move forward to Netzach in Tiferet. Netzach is um, everlasting. That's what it means, everlasting. So how can we ensure that our chesed will be everlasting? Let me ask you a question. Where do our emotions live? In which tense are they? Do they live in the past, the present, or the future? I'm gonna answer because there's a, a slight delay. Every time I ask a question, it takes a few seconds to answer, so I don't wanna keep everybody waiting, but I know you're gonna write this anyway. Our emotions live in the present. That's where we feel them the most strongly. We don't feel emotions necessarily towards the future, or a little bit of excitement, but the actual emotion you feel in the present. Sometimes we can feel something, we can have an emotion from the past, but what that usually means is that we have just brought our past into the present with us because we're no longer in the past, but if we're still feeling it, we just brought that with us. So that's a whole other conversation about whether or not that's healthy, how to do that in a healthy way. That's a different topic. The idea is that our emotions live in the present. So the problem with that is that that can interfere sometimes with some of our reactions and some of our responses that we often regret later. But because I'm feeling like this right now in the present, this is what my reaction is going to be or this is what my response is going to be because this is how I'm feeling right now. If you want to have long-term compassion, we cannot judge a person by what they're saying or doing right now. We can't. And I like to think about this sometimes when I see people writing really negative things online sometimes, really um, responses, comments that can be detrimental, that can really hurt a person very badly. 
I try to think to myself, that person must be going through something really difficult, right? They're having a hard day. They're struggling so much and that's why they're writing what they're writing. If a person responds in, also in real life, they must be having a hard day. If a person is extra rude to you, I get this sometimes at the airport. I have people who are in a position of power and feel like they can talk to you whenever they want to talk to you. They're in pain, they're hurting, they're going through something hard, they're triggered by something. The way a person is in the moment is not necessarily always the best part of who they are, okay? They were a different person in the past and they would probably be a different person in the future. But in this moment, this is how they're reacting and this is how they're behaving. So always assume that they're having a hard day, they're struggling with something, look to the future of what you want this relationship to look like. So let's take it more practical to people that we know, not to strangers, okay? Before responding to your spouse, right? To your children, thank you, Haley. Before responding to your husband, um, to your children in a way that would be very reactive, that's the moment to stop and think, what is more important to me? Okay, what's more important to me? To react according to how I'm feeling right now or this relationship? Think long-term. I want my shalom bias, so I'm not gonna react right now. I want, to, I want my children to have healthy responses and to have a healthy relationship with me, so I'm not gonna respond like that right now. We have to think before we react long term, okay? And when another person does that also, to just make an assumption, this is not who they're going to be long term, hopefully, but right now they might be going through something that's really hard and they might be experiencing something very difficult, okay? That's how we could have our compassion being netzach, being everlasting, being long term, okay? Now let's talk about the next day, uh, which is, whoops, sorry, which is hod in Tiferet. And here, Avivit, is where we get into humility. This is kind of part two of Tiferet and Tiferet. All right? What does this mean? Hod in Tiferet is humility in compassion. True compassion requires sensitivity towards others. This we know, right? Removing ourselves from the moment to think of how to be the most sensitive to this person. For example, if you want to invite someone for Shabbos, somebody who doesn't have a family, somebody who's single or divorced or widowed or, or has children or doesn't have children, but they're alone, you want to invite someone for Shabbos. Having this understanding of being humble and sensitive in the way we invite them realizing that this person wishes they could be the one inviting us instead. They wish more than anything. And having that sensitivity when we invite them will allow us to have humility in our compassion, okay? Um, as we said before, and again, this is just the next level of what we mentioned previously about chesed, give, the giver always has to be on the same level as the recipient. And that means realizing that this person might be a recipient right now because right now they need something from me. But in another area of life, they're a leader. In another area of life, they're a giver. We all go through cycles of being recipients and being givers. That's how life works and it's, it's a healthy part of life. That's how we have interdependent relationships with people because sometimes we need others and sometimes they need us. And that's very, very healthy. But we have to realize that I am not superior to you because I'm giving to you right now. Absolutely not. And you are not inferior to me because I'm giving to you. Because I'm giving to you in this area, but you're giving to other people in so many other areas. Or maybe you're even giving to me in other areas. So sometimes we're recipients and we're givers and we're leaders at the same time. And we have to always view people like that. Right now, I'm giving something to you because I have it and you don't. But humility means to take a moment to thank Hashem and say, wow, thank you Hashem for putting me in a position where I can be a giver. Thank you, it feels so good to be a giver. And don't be afraid of being a receiver. We have to be receivers very often in life. I remember the first time I had to be a receiver. I mean, obviously I always received as a child from my parents, we do naturally, but as an adult, really, really to, that I needed help from neighbors 
at a certain point during one of my pregnancies, I wasn't feeling well and I just needed some help. And it was so difficult for me. I was living in Eretz Israel at the time and it was just the hardest thing to, for me to receive until I had to remind myself that if I am not a receiver, she cannot be a giver. So by me receiving, I'm allowing her to give. That means by me receiving and allowing her to give, I am actually being a giver. And I was able to flip the whole thing around. So we can't be afraid of being a receiver. We all go through that cycle of giving and receiving, but have in mind that even when we're receivers, we're also givers in other areas of life. So nobody's superior, nobody's inferior. Thank you for giving this. It's exactly what I needed. I'm so happy to hear that. That's why Hashem put you on this live right now. So that is hod in tiferet, okay? That is humility in compassion. Humility, again, just to sum it up, it means that I hold no more significance than you. I'm just playing the role that is pragmatic and convenient based on where I am and what I can give in this moment. Okay, that's what it means. Hod in Tiferet. Now let's get to Yesod in Tiferet. Hold on, is there another message here that I missed? It just got a little weird. Okay, let's talk about Yesod in Tiferet. Yesod is um, the foundational bond. Okay, a bond uh, between people. So when it comes to Yesod of Tiferet, of the foundation, the bond in compassion, we have to understand that for compassion to be fully um, realized and fulfilled, it needs bonding with it because it requires creating a channel of connection between the two people, between the giver and between the recipient. I could do a one-time act of kindness, and that is beautiful. Any act of kindness that we do, no matter how big, no matter how small, it is absolutely beautiful. But a mutuality that extends beyond a one-time act of kindness, beyond this moment of need, is a bond that can live on forever. And that is the most gratifying um, result of compassion. Um, doing a one-time act of kindness is beautiful, but that's what we would call chesed. And of course, we know how chesed is wonderful and very much needed. But if we want to elevate it to the level of tiferet, then that's what we need to do. It means that we want to utilize our compassion beyond isolated acts. And we want to create an actual bond with the person that we're giving to, with the recipient. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, on this day of Yesod in Tiferet is, do you bond with the person that you have compassion for? Are you creating some sort of bond, some sort of relationship with them, or do you remain distant from them? Does your interaction with them achieve anything beyond a single act of sympathy, or is it actually really more than that? Do we really grow to care about the person? Okay, that's what Yesod in Tiferet means. Esther wrote, thank you for sharing this. I love this so much. Will you save this life? Thank you so much, Esther. Yes, with Hashem's help, we will save the life, okay? Now, let's move on to the very last day in Tiferet. And that is Malchut in Tiferet. Malchut, what does that mean? Yesterday we described it as, I mean a few days ago, we described it as royalty. Today we're describing it as nobility. Remember we said that they all have a few different ways to describe them because we can't give a direct, a very, uh, we can't give an exact definition of Hebrew words to English. There's so many different ways that they fit in. And the, the category is all encompassing when we say it in Hebrew, malchut means so many things. So sometimes we're gonna focus on royalty, nobility, but it's all the same family, it's all the same thing. So what is malchut in tiferet? What is nobility in compassion? And this means that we need to properly examine the dignity in our compassion. Because for compassion to be fully utilized, for compassion to live out its purpose and be, and be fully complete, it has to recognize 
and appreciate the dignity in other people, the nobility in other people, um, the individual sovereignty, right? That's what it truly requires of us. The, that means that when we do uh, an act, when we have an act of compassion, and when we are being compassionate people in general, because we said it's even more than just an individual act, it is coming from a place of dignity on our end, and we are projecting that dignity onto the other person. We're bringing out dignity in the other person. We're here to boost the other person. It's not just to give them something, but we're here to make sure that they feel good about themselves, they feel better about who they are, um, to boost their self-esteem and to kind of create and cultivate human dignity, right? Both your own dignity, as I said, and the dignity of the one benefiting from your compassion. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, is my compassion expressed in a dignified manner? Does it bring out the dignity in other people? Do I recognize the fact that when I experience compassion as something that is dignified, it will reflect, reflect reciprocally to the other person, to the ones who receive the compassion? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves when it comes to malchut in tiferet. So in general, rather than just giving, which of course is beautiful, there's a time and place for one-time acts of kindness, absolutely, absolutely, okay? But there, we can elevate it sometimes to a level of tiferet, which means helping the person not just in this moment with the thing they need, but helping them elevate themselves to a place of dignity. And that is what I wanted to share with you about the Midos for the week of Tiferet. Um, I hope this was helpful and I hope you were able to take notes so that you can see each day. Otherwise, obviously you can go back and watch. I'm gonna save it now. That is Hashem. Hi, Sophie. And let me know if you have any questions, any comments. I have got another couple of minutes I can sit here with you. Um, and of course, as always, if there are questions that, hold on, I'm just thinking. Yeah, you could always DM me. I know, by the way, a few of you DM'd me that I didn't get back to yet with questions from the other live. Uh, that's where I'm gonna try to get there tonight. You are very welcome. It's a pleasure. Um, I'm thinking, what was the question that somebody asked before? So many beautiful thoughts and thought-provoking ideas. Thank you, you are super welcome. Oh, somebody asked before, are you still here? Somebody asked about Rosh Chodesh Iyar. Ah, yes, that was the question. Rosh Chodesh, are you still here? If you are, let me know. I can't go back to see who asked it because it was, it was like very far up. Um, Rosh Chodesh Iyar, and that it comes out in the week. Oh, you're still here, Haley, okay that it comes out of the week of Tif Eret. One second, thank you so much. You are amazing, always so inspiring and well-spoken. Thank you, thank you. Just here to share words of Torah and inspiration with you. And I'm just so happy that you're here with me so we can learn together. I'm really so, so thankful and so grateful for each one of you. Because I know you don't have to be here and you're choosing to be. Um, so ER is actually, um, we know that the, um, if you want to take a part the letters of the month of Iyar, this is very famous, very well known, that it stands for Ani Hashem Rofecha, right? So we have the Aleph, the Ani, and then we have the two Yuds, is Hashem, and the Resh is Rofecha. This is a month of healing. That's what Iyar is known for. It is a month of healing. This could be all different types of healing, healing, physical healing, emotional healing, intellectual healing, mental healing, spiritual healing, you name it, whatever, dimension we need healing in, that's what the month of ER, that's the energy and the power in the month of ER. So it is very, very closely connected to Tiferet because Tiferet um, is, as we mentioned, there are a few different ways of understanding it. There's, it's understanding this high level of truth. It's about balance. It's about um, compassion. And these are all different forms of healing. We can heal ourselves um, in terms of humility. We can heal ourselves in terms of, you know, whatever it is that we need. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to get to all of you in a few minutes, to the, the questions that are coming in one second. Um, 
And sometimes in order to have compassion to other people, proper compassion, which is the way we define Tiferet today, is to first learn how to have compassion to ourselves. And that means that we have to experience the healing that we need to experience in order for ourselves, in order to be there for another person. Okay, so if it's emotional healing, whatever it is that we need, if we want to see the truth in something, we need to heal within us anything that we have been fed that might be poisonous to us, that might be dangerous to us, that might be afflicting us with misconceptions. We have to heal all of that in order to tap into the real truth, right? So uh, proper balance, creating balance and harmony in life, which again is the meaning of Tiferet, that requires a tremendous amount of healing so that we're, we're even keeled and we're balanced and we don't allow our emotions to overtake our intellect and we don't allow the intellect to overtake you know, our spirituality, we don't, right? It requires a proper balance. So that's what I would say is a connection to Rosh Chodesh Iyar always falling out in the week of Tiferet because there are so many different types of healing that we have the power to tap into in order to achieve the highest and most elevated levels of Tiferet that we can, okay? Um, we're going to find out what each of the, well, what each of the day of the Omer is. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're doing, we're going day by day, trying to understand the deeper meaning and the message of what avoda, what inner work can we do based on the midos of that day of the Omer, the week and the day mida. So that's what we're doing here. So just keep following along. Um, how can we tap into that healing? Shani asked. Okay, so that's a much deeper question. Of course, that would take a much longer answer. But um, in a nutshell, every healing starts with recognizing actually what we said today. Asking, and this is the, this is the power of tomorrow when it comes to Gevura in Tiferet. Asking ourselves the hard questions, okay? What am I avoiding? What am I not allowing myself to feel, to understand, to know about myself, to know about other people? Because all healing starts with knowledge, with understanding of who I am, why am I experiencing the things I'm experiencing? Why am I doing the things I'm doing? Why, do I re why is my automatic reaction one like this? And, and we can see it, um, it manifests differently based on the circumstance, but most of the time it is the same core reaction that is usually based on a core fear that's creating that reaction. So if we can be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves those hard questions and get to those hard truths, which again, tr try to do this tomorrow because it's specifically the power of tomorrow, but of course we can do this any day. Um, and that is why Am I afraid to do this, to say that? Why do I react in this way or that way? What is the underlying fear of that? Get to know myself, discover the parts of myself that I've been hiding, that have been buried in the sand. Discover the parts of my spouse, my children, my, my parents, my in-laws, whoever it is that, um, that I need the healing from or with, get down to the bottom. That is the very, very first place to start, okay? just an understanding of what is going on and why I'm reacting this way. And once we face that, and once we acknowledge the things that we're actually feeling, that's the only way to get to the other side of it, okay? We can't be afraid of it. No more, we can't, we can't live as an ostrich. All right, I hope that was helpful. Okay, ladies and gents, and whoever is here with us today, thank you. Thank you for being here with me. It was a pleasure as always, and um, with Hashem's help. I will come back next week with the next Mida, but maybe I'll even come online before that. All right? You're very welcome. You're welcome. Love you all. Thank you for being here. You are super welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, bye everyone. Have a great day. Have a great week.